here at JP, one of the unique things with building JP rifles is every person gets an order. Just okay. like a chef in a restaurant gets an order for what people want to eat, we get the order for what kind of rifle people want. And this is on your website, jprifles.com, the gun builder, right? Gun builder, correct. Yep. You can actually go through and click. It was a lot of fun. Exactly right. And we go down the list to make sure we have the parts. Um, we've got an individual on the other side of the shop that has the parts pulled into a box delivered to us. Each gun is built by one gunsmith or one assembler. I hate to call myself a gunsmith, I'm a retired cop instead. But uh, each person takes responsibility for that firearm, which I think is very important for people to realize that we take great pride in building the best rifles in the world. So these guns are actually built cradle to grave, aren't they? That's exactly right. Fantastic. If you can see that, it's polished almost to a mere shine. The only bad thing about it, now I have polishing dust and such inside the chamber. Yep. So I'm going to clean that out using some lacquer thinner and things like that to make sure the bore in the chamber is completely clear so we don't have to worry about any sort now, of malfunction. this is a unique step because most barrel manufacturers or AR manufacturers, and we know there's about a billion of them out there right now, Correct. most would not go through the time that you just showed me of polishing these feed ramps to this level for the reliability. This is pretty impressive. Well, and it's, it looks nice that that's, it's visually appealing. But it goes much farther than that. Yep. Uh, making a rifle that is uh, more reliable um, is a good thing, in my yeah. opinion, even though it takes a little extra time. I'm okay with this. I'm using yeah. this one, so I appreciate All the right, reliability. Uh, the final step we have in the barrel is we uh, chamber check them. Okay. Um, make sure and that everything is up to snuff. Uh, and is this a go and no-go gauge? That's correct, with, with the, the exact bolt that you're gonna be using. Okay. Now I've seen a lot of bolts in the military, bolt carrier groups and private side. Bolt carrier group, the bolt carrier in this bolt is a little bit different. Specifically this <laughs> bolt, I noticed something before we were setting up. Can you talk to me about why this bolt's special? One of the biggest problems that we run into with high volumes of fire bolts that, that handle a lot of shooting is they start to break at the cam pin, um, or the cam pin hole I should say. If you look closely, this is a much beefer area on our bolt than any others on the market. You actually added more surface area here to reinforce that critical Correct. area of the and bolt. We've never had one break. Go plus two is the one we normally go with. Um, and we'll feel from there whether that's uh, good or not. Okay. And then what are you feeling for right now? Basically how tight the bolt fits in this particular chamber. Okay. Um, each chamber can be a little bit different. We don't control that. The, the, the company of the barrels uh, that makes the barrels does, but I have to say I've never had one that was, was out of spec, which is a good thing. Yeah, and most people, uh, if you're sitting at home, most people think that every gun manufacturer makes their own bullet, our own barrels, pardon me. But in all honesty, very few make their own barrels. They're generally sourced from a barrel manufacturer and that's all they do. Correct. The one thing I will say is the only way you're going to get a JP barrel is getting it through JP. Yep. And now you're installing the Ford Assist, correct? Correct. Ford Assist assembly, I should say. And I'll check to make sure everything's straight before I get it pounded in yep. too far and get myself into trouble. <laughs> because these roll pins are actually a flat piece of metal rolled up and they expand inside the pin, don't they? Exactly right. They're inside yeah. the hole. So the danger with taking a roll pin in and out is you actually start abusing it and it doesn't do its job anymore. It doesn't do its job, that's exactly right. And what happens when it doesn't do its job? In law enforcement or military, somebody, somebody gets hurt. Yep. Exactly. Again, that attention to detail that we try to stress so much. And that comes down from, from John, uh, both of his sons, uh, Pretty much everyone that works here is involved in firearms in some way, shape, or form. Like I said, you can tell the company is made up of shooters because the attention to detail is a little bit different. It, it shows that the end user is part of the, the conversation and building, designing, and testing the weapons. It gets to be kind of a unique day when we have a chance to get out and shoot together because we're kind of a competitive bunch That's and good. it tends to, uh, to make for an enjoyable uh, fun-filled day, that's for sure. What's the saying? Uh, a good friend of mine served in the Green Berets, competition breeds excellence. Well, and I think that is, is uh, the perfect way of putting it because it is a situation where anytime you can get together, compete head-to-head, -to -head, find a product that 
someone came up with an idea they came up with and make it work just a little bit better. Yep. I'm stealing that. <laughs> Maybe it can make me a little bit better shooter. So, so now we're putting the uh, brass deflector on, correct? correct? Uh, so this on, is a little bit different than the A2 style, Exactly. Right? A little different style. Um, the brass deflector will be held on by two screws that we're going to blue Loctite in to make sure that they don't come out, but they can come out if we need them to sometime in the future. Okay. Other than that, the dust cover forward assist is basically identical. To, to a mil spec A2. Mil spec, correct. How do you get the accuracy in the barrel and the upper receiver to match up, right? There's a lot of the, the lower end kits or even mil spec, there's a little bit of wiggle in there. You guys do something different and what is that? We call it thermal fitting. Okay. The idea is to make the mating surfaces between the upper receiver and the barrel extension as tight as possible. In fact, we make it so tight, you won't be able to pull a barrel out. We use a 20 ton press press barrels out if we have to have to redo a barrel. Okay, so you don't get that shift from point of aim to point of impact. More importantly, you don't get to see this. We'll be back with you in a second. Yeah. <laughs> what we're gonna discuss next is the thermal dissipators. Okay. From your experience, what burns, what part of the barrel burns out the quickest? Right next to the chamber, because we had a bore erosion gauge in the military because yep. you start hammering burst or uh, full auto fire or sustained rates of fire, Correct. and that heat just rips apart the chamber, and yep. now the rounds start going further and further and further down, and you have to replace barrels. That's, that was my next question. What causes the erosion? The heat. The heat, yep. Thermal dissipators are finned aluminum. Now, this is interesting because we've seen this technology in the IT world for a long time. CPUs or processing units use heat sinks to dissipate heat. This is a known technology, it works, obviously. Most computers would fry up if they didn't have something like this. So there's not a whole lot of people doing this on the barrels though. No, uh, um, and the unique thing about it, in fact, I've heard a lot of people make comments that they're a waste of money, why even bother putting them on there? It's a situation where anything you can do to take heat away from the chamber, from the barrel, especially right in front of the chamber, yeah. is gonna extend barrel life. Um, it's gonna aid in long-term accuracy, reliability, all those things. And so what you're doing with these fins or the blades is you're actually dramatically increasing the surface area to allow the heat to dissipate, right? Correct. Same principle. It's basic principle of a Harley-Davidson air-cooled motorcycle. Yep. Yeah, vehicles and CPUs or computers yep. have been using this technology forever. JP revolutionizing it and bringing it onto the barrel. I like that. And these are made of aluminum, uh, a 700% increase in uh, surface area from the barrel. Aluminum actually takes heat away from the steel and dissipates it. B basically, first hand experience for me is to go through a course of fire with 90 rounds of ammunition in a matter of 35 seconds, yep. you're, you're shooting pretty fast. A lot of hand guards get so hot to the point it's hard to even hang on to them. This one with, with a thermal dissipator, it's nice and cool. You, you notice a little bit of warmth and that's it. Other people can't even hang on to their rifles. Yep. So well, it, we'll definitely put that to the test. I'm looking forward to it. I'm sure we will. Somebody looking at a JP, they're not looking at a $500 AR. The people that are looking Correct. at a $500 AR are looking for the mass produced cookie cutter machine pumping out and that's why you get a $500 AR. Exactly um, right. That being said, JP does have a range of product lines, everything from super high end, beautiful uh, custom gun. I even saw your gun at SHOT Show modeled after a B-17, right? Yep, yep, the Billet Beauty. Correct. The Billet Beauty. So all the way from that end down to the JP-15, which is a good patrol style or lawfully armed citizen rifle. Exactly. Um, and the prices range anywhere from the, you know, approximately $1,200 range to approximately $5,000 range, yep. depending on what you want put on there. And that's a good, healthy range, like you said, because there's other people that are mass producing, I mean, a thousand different AR companies, but I haven't seen the attention and detail like I've seen today. Well, I appreciate that. And this is, uh, you're gonna get a quality rifle out of this. Uh, that much, I, I give you my personal guarantee as well as I do to every- well, I know where the armor is. Yeah. <laughs> so I looked around, John's not here, but he comes out to the shop every now and then, doesn't he? Frequently. Okay, <laughs> well, what does he do? Because well, somebody who started JP, right? John Paul started JP right. in 91, he's still actively engaged in not just the business, but the end product and the fine tuning, isn't he? Very much so. Um, he shoots a vast majority of, of these rifles, if not this one specifically, versions of this. After shooting these firearms, he oftentimes comes up with ideas of, of making it even better than it is already. Okay. 
Sometimes he brings those ideas to the engineers or brings them out to the shop, come up with a new way of doing things. Um, in fact, the paste inside the thermal dissipators is something that he came up with years ago as a way of making, increasing the efficiency of the thermal dissipator. Fantastic. Um, so it's his all mind is constantly going on that. Process improvement, product improvement. Correct. Never stops. Okay, testing your work. I'm not even remotely concerned now. <laughs> oh, that is crazy. Okay, if you've never tried a JP trigger, I'm telling you right now, even if you don't have a JP gun, Go pick up one of their triggers. The reset is nice and short. It's clean. It's yep. everything's clean. There's not a whole lot of creep. There's not over travel. Just a beautiful trigger job. We've installed the carbine buffer tube. Yep. I've, I've staked it into place. We've got the sign capture spring system. I oiled that before I put it in there. Stock is ready to go. All we need to do is mate the upper to the lower and then install the uh, the rails that you okay. requested be put on there, and then you've got a rifle that ready to go. Good stuff. And anybody watching, you can tell this is not a competition gun. Great battery compartments, adjustable stock, lock Oops. it in. You don't live in California, so I didn't need yep. to put the California <laughs> Thank God. bullet button. Nice solid gun. Put it on safe, won't fire. There should be a magazine in yep. here. Saw one right here. What we look for is to make sure it inserts, releases, locks to the rear back, locks bolt back with both. On safe, there's your rifle. Brilliant. Now try cocking it with a upper so charging handle. Standard charging handle, you'd have to come over the top, palm it if you have an extended. But I have to move my face. You have to move your face here away. if I need to, and now I can turn the port inbound so I can actually observe that ob object or uh, casing leaving the chamber, or you can even come underhand, right? That is beautiful. Great you made, work. You made a good choice on that rifle, I will say. Great work. <laughs> this is beautiful. Well, you'll be seeing this and a lot more JP rifles uh, on the range with us at courses around the country. Thanks for your work today, nice. and let's no go problem. shoot. Okay. Thank you again.